Hey, good evening, y'all, and welcome to another video of mine. Today, I have, a, I have something to show y'all here. You know, just just exactly how, how can we go as far as installing Windows 10 on, on an old PC. This is probably, this is probably my oldest PC yet. It's probably my oldest PC yet. That I have right here. That was, you know, that I was successfully able to install and run Windows 10. As you can see there, it's a... It's a Sony Vive. See, that's the front of the case. And up here is a DVD burner, DVD ROM. Here you got floppy drive, some card readers, card reader slots. And down here you got ATI sticker. Got a sticker for an Intel Pentium D. And a sticker for design for Windows XP. Same as if you open that up. Got you a bunch of I.O. ports for TV, audio. That's the model number there. You can see right here. See right here. It says it was manufactured in July of 2005. So let's go ahead and power this on. And we got it booting. There's the Vio logo from Sony. There's the Pentium D. There's Windows 10 booting it up. And by the way, this monitor is also the original Sony monitor as well. Folks, better. And there we are, we're booted up to the desktop. <coughs> Some obstacles that I did had to overcome. First of all, this being the early Pentium D, I actually I actually wasn't able to load the 64-bit version of Windows 10, but I was, I was at least able to load the 32-bit version. So we're good to go. Of course, I got Steam and all that loaded. <coughs> Going to Properties. And there it is. Uh, for some reason, I guess I was gonna get the get the Pro Edition, but I guess he gave me the Enterprise Edition for some reason. But it's all right. At least I got it activated and all that. So this Windows 10 is the. As you can see there, it's the. It's the Steam. As you can see here is the 2020 version of Windows 10. And if we go into the keyboard. And if we go into system information. As you can actually see it. <coughs> Microsoft Windows 10 Enterprise. It's by Sony Corporation. That's the model number. <coughs> BIOS version date actually actually still has a BIOS date of 
of May 18, 2005. So yeah, this PC is from mid-2005. It's already run the latest 2020 version of Windows 10. As you can see there. Focus right. Yep, 2020 version of Windows. Yep, so. So this operating system is 15 years newer than the hardware itself. So I can open up Google Chrome. Even do some basic tasks, okay. I'm pretty sure I can run some older games as well. So if I want to go to YouTube, I can do that. <clears throat> and let's see here. See if I want to view this video here. Scary. <laughs> Was there ever a time when you realized, wow, was that a bad decision? Maybe you were sure the HD DVD was going to be the future? Maybe you thought the Zoom was sure to overthrow the iPod? Maybe instead of Google, you liked to use... <laughs> okay, couldn't keep a straight face there. Or maybe you were like me and decided that instead of an iPad or an Android tablet, you had to have a BlackBerry playbook. Huh. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking, what? BlackBerry made a tablet? Hot yes, they did. This was actually a few years after the release of the iPhone, around the time management had acknowledged that Apple was a threat after falling way behind them, and started the strategy of doing whatever Apple did. The iPhone had a touch screen, so the BlackBerry Storm had a touch screen. To three, Apple six. released the iPad, so naturally, BlackBerry had to release a tablet of its own. And thus we got the play a 7-inch tablet screen. and a $700 price tag. <coughs> needless to say, the playbook flopped, reaching about a 3% market share compared to Apple's 61% in the tablet market. The price was slashed and more tablets sold, but overall the playbook never did take off. Enter me, someone who had never owned a tablet and hardly ever used one, but after seeing a friend's playbook, thought it was the coolest device ever. Add in the bargain price compared to the iPad and the playbook seemed like the obvious choice. I hopped aboard the sinking Blackberry ship and bought a 64 gigabyte playbook. Now it would be too easy to make fun of the playbook for being a product that was destined to be forgotten, but a lot like the Newton, the playbook is actually a pretty decent device that had a lot of potential, especially considering it was rushed out in about a year. The tablet isn't too bulky, being about a centimeter thick and nine inches across. In that space though, it hosts a micro USB for charging and connecting with the computer, a turbo charging port for a special dock, and a feature not seen on many tablets, a micro HDMI port for a open Excellent. It has a resolution of 10... Back when I was still in elementary school in the early 2000s, I remember coming across a set of instructions online detailing how to make a handheld NES out of existing hardware. The idea seemed pretty cool to me, being able to take something as large and clunky as a console and turn it into a handheld. And my first thought was, what if I could do the same with a custom PC? Instead of having a laptop, what if there was a fully functional computer that I could hold in my hand? <coughs> Little did I know, even at the time, that device already existed. Before the iPhone came around and basically shook up the entire tech industry, the theory for portable computation was a bit different. The continuum of powerful devices to portable devices was beginning to blur. On one end, there was the strictly portable devices like calculators, PDAs, so and the usually cell phones that evolved to become more like traditional computers. And on the other side, there were but if you think about even the smarts and an old style too, it's a it's an old four by three twelve. PCs or ultra mobile personal computers, UMPCs, an official hardware specification. It's actually Microsoft and Intel in two thousand and six. actually twelve eighty by ten twenty four. Pocket sized form factor. They're more like a sub so it's actually the old school stuff. 
Since part of the UMPC spec includes but before the they made wallet system, screens. The first glimpses of UMPCs, though, predate the name by a couple of years. Founded in the distant future of the year 2000, the company OQO had been teasing a handheld PC like I had described for years. Four years, to be exact. And after much anticipation and doubt, the OQO Model 1 would finally ship in 2004. Of course, in that time, okay. Sony was also getting on board with the whole micro <coughs> and started putting out a few sub-notebooks of their own. In fact, at nearly the same time as OQO, Sony released the VGN U50, a fairly comparable computer at about the same form factor. Now, a certain other YouTube channel with timing so good it's actually getting a little bit uncanny... <laughs> has already done a great job taking a look at the OQO Model 2 from 2007. But after seeing the OQO in action, I can pretty confidently say that it really doesn't hold a candle to Yeah, which I remember, I do remember seeing that Sony. So, just for fun, yeah, let's right take a look at what Sony had to offer in 2006. I do remember I seeing that in this by back in early 2007. What I have with me here is the Sony VAIO VGN UX280P. And don't worry, I will be referring to the Sony VAIO VGN UX280P by full name for the rest of this video. It's a fairly mid-range model from the UX line of UX. Yeah, the, his PC also has, has a VG, VGN. One gigabyte yeah, VGN is a typical specs model for a number. Today, trimmed into a device 6 inches wide, 4 inches tall, and packing some serious girth in the C dimension. Wow, 6 inches. Hell, smartphones nowadays are much bigger than that. At nearly 1.5 inches deep. Overall, and at the time this was actually made to be a full fledged PC. Maintains a sweet futuristic design. But many Which phones nowadays are actually larger than 6 inches. In movies like. Okay. Do some other things. Let's see, I check my Facebook. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I remember when I changed it a while ago. And of course, I'm logged in on Facebook. Now, of course, admittedly, you know, this, this PC does struggle a bit. It does feel a bit slow in Windows 10, but, but it still gets the job done. See, I can check my photos. See, it's even got my photos stored online, too. See, it's neat, you know, how, it, how I can take pictures from my phone, and then it basically syncs it with my Google account on here, so that's neat. Um, so yeah. One, one more thing to do, control alt delete, get some information on the specs. <coughs> so you can see there it's a, it's an Intel Pentium D CPU 2.8 gigahertz. It's basically, it's basically the very first dual core CPU. <coughs> It's basically Intel, Intel's very first dual core CPU ever. You know, very first CPU ever to actually feature two physical cores. As you can see there. So yes, the Pentium D CPU did have two physical cores, however. <coughs> however, the architecture was still based on the old Pentium 4 design. 
Apparently his architecture was still based on the, on the old Pinion Ford design. Instead, instead of the newer core design. You know, like the core 2 duels and core 2 quads and core i5s, i7s and all that. <clears throat> Apparently this is the processor to that. As you can see it's got 3 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. It's running at 533 MHz. If I can go here and get some information on the video card. It apparently is a AMD Radeon HD 7000 series, 1 gigabyte of dedicated RAM. And of course I also got Steam running on here too. So I guess later on I haven't downloaded any games, but maybe I can download some older games. Just see how they run on here. So yeah, that's about it. So from what I see, can you use Windows 10 on a on a computer from 2005? Well, pretty much as long as you keep your expectations reasonable and like that, yes. This can actually handle at least the 32-bit version of Windows 10. You know it is a bit slow, but it does get the job done. So this is it, guys. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Also, feel free to express any any questions, any concerns, comments. You know, down in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this video and have a good day.